Well, hello and welcome once again. J76NY here. Playing Suzerain Torpor Games. Douchebag Playthrough Season 2. Uh, I think this is episode 25. And uh, last episode we did start to get into the um, upcoming political situation. Didn't make any friends in the last episode. Um, I tipped off Marcel Caranti about a government investigation that's ongoing. I uh, did that because I'm going to still need his help to cover up some certain transgressions by a certain vice president. Um, I told Lucian I was going to let the emergency decree ex um, expire. Uh, and then we had notification of a whole bunch of protests breaking out. Um, so that may not happen. Um, we'll see how things go. Our industrial zone is progressing nicely. Um, we've got a lot to do, so let's get to work. The work of the president of Swordland. Got the briefing on the unrest. And here we're going to hear all about it. Terrorists from BFF bombed a gender Marie outpost in Rybal. The attack took a toll of six lives and left 11 injured. The abandoned hideout with a cache of KA-74s was found with no trace from the terrorists. Area-wide search with armed, armored vehicles and helicopters is now underway. Uh, Soul Dam captured by the BFF. Latest reports from the workers at Soul Dam indicate that the energy facility has been taken over in what is thought to be a terror attack. The escaped workers were unharmed and the witnesses reported that the attackers were most likely from the BFF. According to their account, a group of at least 30 to 40 attackers quickly dismantled the security. Police have been deployed to the area. So far, no demands have been made. Polio disease is controlled inside the Berger region. Ministry of Health, that's the one thing we're doing right, is our uh, health system, has submitted a heartwarming report. States that the polio disease is controlled inside of Bergia. He stated that we had flattened the curve of infection within the Bergia region, and with the mandatory vaccine, it will be hard for the disease to spread into other regions of the country. So there's some good news. Uh, Governor of Bergia, Felix Braun, kidnapped. BFF has orchestrated an attack and raided the governor's office in dire killing four guards. Felix Braun, governor of Bergia, was kidnapped. No ransom requests or demands were delivered yet. Seems like things are heating up pretty uh, widespread across the uh, whole area with the BFF. I'm assuming I'm going to be given an option to deal with this in this meeting here, so let's go to it. <clears throat> Lilius entered my office and took a seat. She was frowning intensely. She didn't talk at first, just fixed me with a steady gaze. When she did speak up, it was in strained tones. We have a problem. Like what? It just came in. Here, take a look. I took the document from her hands and started reading it. The report was titled, BFF Attack on Soul Dam. I looked up immediately after reading it. Yes, you read that right. Ludish Freedom Front has taken over Soul Dam. That dam currently provides 90% of the electricity to Bergia and its neighboring regions. They destroy the power station. I don't even want to think about the outcome. Thankfully, no casualties have been reported yet. We know that they have taken the staff hostage. If this news ever gets out, we will be the laughing stock of the entire world. Uh, what are their demands? How could we let this happen? The dam was not necessarily guarded well. No one thought they would hit a power center. Mr. President, I'm afraid that's not all. With a simultaneous attack, the Bluetooth terrorists have raided the governor's office in Dyer and kidnapped Governor Braun. They're holding him hostage as well. Carl Greisner is on his way there here right now. He will tell us what he knows so far. And here he is. Status report. Mr. President, I'm so sorry for being late. 
Carl, I already informed the president of the situation. Do you have any updates? We have just received the demands from the terrorists. President Rain, in the name of peace, we have taken hold of the Soul Dam and the mayor of Dyer is our hostage. The free people of Bludia have suffered enough under the tyranny of Swordland. Our villages were destroyed, our men and women assaulted, our children killed by our very own government in the same in the name of this dam. We, the BFF, are with the people. We, the BFF, always defended the downtrodden. We, the BFF, fight for freedom. We, the BFF, are not like the Swordish government. We know compassion and we believe in a chance of reconciliation between our people. That's why we are demanding a delegation from the Swordish government to negotiate the price of our freedom. We are ready to sit at the table as equals. Make no mistake, we also know that true freedom comes at a cost. We will not hesitate to sacrifice as many lives as it takes to achieve our goals. If our demands are not met, we will cut off electricity to the entirety of the Bergia and Nargis region, along with the mayor's head. Take this as your final warning. Elect Bluderet. Somehow I got a steam achievement for having a basically an uprising. As I thought. Mr. President, the BFF is a threat against our nation. It must be completely eradicated. Uh, we will not negotiate with terrorists. Your orders, Mr. President? Uh, search and destroy. Eliminate the enemies of the state. Infiltrate the dam quietly and take them out. No need to cause a ruckus. I will involve the military. This has gotten out of hand. Um, do we leave it up to the police or the military? Well, it is a revolution. Go with the military. What? Cannot use Swordish armed forces inside our border. That's against the Constitution. When has that mattered? Watch me. <laughs> Uh, we are in a state of emergency, Lilius. I will use my powers to give them authorization. Sir, you cannot simply authorize the army to work within our borders. This is under the jurisdiction of the police force. Uh, call Joseph immediately. Come on, Carl, we're leaving. Lilius hurriedly left the room. Carlos bowed. Car President? Oh boy. He followed after her. Oh boy. Industrial expansion. Large expansion program presents several options to improve industrial capacity. And they all cost a lot. Mr. Hull and Manger have prepared a massive industrial expansion plan that could support several key industries in the country through state investment. Swordland could become much more competitive as a hub for new industry within this initiative. Our economy went down another notch. Another two notches, actually. Um, Jesus. We could go with military, electronics, automotive, or agriculture. They all cost two. Um, go with the military. Let's see, Swordling expands local military industrial complex. Government's pouring large amounts of funds to increase local weapons production and to reduce Swordland's reliance on foreign weapons, which are dominated by Arcasia, United Cantana, and Rumberg. Dozen military manufacturers have just seen their budgets tripled. A new wave of mechanical and chemical engineers are entering the factories to produce the first Swordish rifle in the future. The investment in the military industrial complex could also result in weapons exports to other nations in the future. Yet this 
move seems to be only the beginning with many research and development steps to overcome. The nation lacked resources to tack, tackle the material science and weapons manufacturing challenges, but the rain, but with the rain administration, the floodgates might have opened. All right. Extend the emergency. The emergency degree could be extended or revoked. I'm going to have to extend it. I mean... I'm going to have to extend it. If I extend it, it's going to pretty much obliterate our chances of getting reelected, but I don't think we have much chance of getting reelected anyway. Um, my hopes are that at some point I'm offered the option to do away with the elections and just take over as a true dictator. So we're extending the emergency. Walker's plan. And we are moving on to the next turn. Let's uh, see what happens. Checkmate. Chapter 4. I think we're getting close to the uh, end game here. So, what do we have going forward? Another budget deficit, economy still in the toilet, but we're rich and powerful. Uh, nothing to attend to throughout here, so let's read the news. Hegel would take all the necessary steps. In a televised address, Chancellor Americ Hegel claimed intensive fighting will was taking place between Agnolian forces and the locals of Helgeland, resulting in the massacre of ethnic Volgs living on the island. He portrayed the conflict as a national struggle and compared it to the independence wars of the former colonies of Rika. Hegel said Volgsland, as the guarantor of Helgeland's security, would take all the necessary steps to prevent mass atrocities committed against the islanders. Van Horten said in a televised interview that Volkslandians must withdraw their harassment squads from the Marcan Sea before any diplomatic talks can happen. So things are he heating up here in the Marcan Sea. Uh, end of the day at home. It was raining as Serge dropped me off at home after yet another grueling day of work. Guard had held an umbrella over my head as I walked to, from the car to my front door. Inside the house was completely dark. I flipped on the light in the kitchen to find a note from Monica. Uh-oh. She'd gone to visit her parents for the night, bringing Deanna along with her. It left me some food I could reheat for dinner. I took the pot out of the fridge. It was filled with an unidentifiable grayish-looking stew. Evidently, my wife was still upset with me. Order a pizza. Not eating her slop. <coughs> While I was waiting, I went into the living room to fix myself a drink. Suddenly, the phone rang. I went back to the kitchen and answered it. Brock's voice was on the other end. Oh, I, I thought Mom would pick up. Hello to you, too, Frock. Ray. How's Uncle Peter doing? He and Evelyn are divorcing. Oh, bummer. Not exactly a surprise, though. How's army life? It's all right. They keep talking about how things might escalate with Rumberg. Uh, I'll see what I can do to alleviate tensions. The last thing I want is my son going to battle. Queen Beatrice will back off if she knows what's good for her. Rumberg instigated aggression against us. Must face the cons. Even if that means sacrificing your only son? Got it. If it came to that, yes. If it came to that, I'd blow my own brains out before I died for you. I thought the military would beat this kind of insubordination out of you. Watch your mouth or I'll personally transfer you to the border myself. Luckily, there are thousands of sort of troops who don't think that way. What with that one? They're all kind of prickish things to say, but we don't seem to have much of an option. Uh, good catching up with you, Frank. It's dinner time for me. I have to go try calling your mother. 
Millet surgeon, the pizza he had brought was gargantuan. Uh, want to join me for dinner, Serge? Hmm. Nah, just leave it on the table, bro. Enjoy your dinner, sir. Serge left. I ate my pizza alone by the flickering light of the television, wondering when Monica and Deanna would get home. All right. Wow, look at all the news. And all the uh, activities we have to attend to. General staff to oversee security of regions. General staff has announced today that the Swedish Armed Forces will now be overseeing the security in all regions across the country. The reasoning behind the new responsibilities are due to the spread of disobedience to these smaller cities. To mitigate the damage, the central command of the regions as an entirety have been transferred to the army and the governors were temporarily relieved of their duties. So far, the army has been very successful in putting an end to unrest in all of the major cities. Hopefully, peace will return to Swordland quicker than anticipated with the implementation of the new orders. President Rain has taken impossible steps to keep Swordland safe. There are threats raging all across our country, as he has proven to be the only man to stand up to the challenge. Facing an impossible situation, the Maroon Palace today announced the state of emergency will continue. There is no doubt this is hard news for all, but President Anton Rain only has Swordland's best interest at heart. This has to be Karanti's uh, rag here. Choice has been made. He has made for all our greater good. While time passes under a national emergency, remember all that Swordland has been through in the past. The long coups, the civil war, the unending recession. It's leadership like our president's that keep us strong and moving forward. Military in the streets. It's been a few weeks since truckloads of soldiers were transported to Lock Haven. They are standing by in the streets for any indication of civil disobedience. People are randomly getting ID'd by the military and houses are being searched without permission and the slightest suspicion. The unrest seems to have stopped, but at what cost? Is this what the rest of our lives in Swordland will look like? We are forever thankful to our military for protecting us, but isn't this a bit too much? The government has been mostly silent on when these extreme measures will end. We need answers. Uh, the industrial city of Conria is officially complete. Oh, good. Sweet, look at our economy. Went back up to four from one. City is expected soon to rival Lockhaven. I maybe should have done all this stuff before I read the papers. Women's rights bill failed. As expected, the Women's Liberation Act, spearheaded by Minister of Education Kira Walda, failed to pass. This bill, which would have made gender equality in education mandatory, is uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Without the support of the president, it's doomed to fail from the beginning. Tough luck. Uh, private prisons increase revenue. With new private prisons running. Many wealthy inmates have been requested to be transferred to these prisons. We are already expecting to see a substantial amount of revenue being generated from the prisons. Good. Maybe it'll up my uh, budget deficit down. Conriat Industrial Zone has opened to the public. Long lines of factory workers are waiting in line to apply for new opportunities. The opening is expected to increase the industrial output of Conriat by 40%. As per the report, industrial workers from nearby cities are also migrating, creating an influx of jobs and investment. Uh, Supreme Council of Radio and TV bans content. Supreme Council of Swordish Radio and Television announced a ban on HOSTV's talk show program Sweaty Talk and the comedy show Gotta Live With It for making dangerous anti-government propaganda inciting conflict in society. Narble. Police overwhelmed in remote cities. Since the deployment of the police force to combat the unrest, many attacks have occurred in remote cities. Ambushes are rampant and the security forces are being pushed back. Police stations and patrols were the main target of the militant. Unless reinforcements are provided, the current forces are not enough to control the situation. Okay. 
Military assumes control in Berger and Nargis to end BFF. Swordish armed forces are reporting that Soldam has been freed from the grasp of the rebels. During the raid, three separate bases of operations were discovered and eliminated by the army. Put an end to the unrest, the army has assumed direct control over the security in both Berger and Nargis. Governors have been temporarily relieved of their duties. Okay. Human Dignity Bill. The authority of the central bank has been transferred to the Maroon Palace, which means that many monetary actions will be driven by the president of Swordland. The now unshackled economic independence is welcomed by the economic advisors in the palace. Good. Sign or veto the Human Dignity Bill that was approved by the Grand National Assembly. Uh, the newly proposed bill will amend Section 3 of the 1923 Legal Transactions Act. That's going to cost money. I'm already at a negative two. Uh, let's see. Human Dignity Bill will protect common decency and prevent the violation of moral principles that occur in the act of prostitution by making it a legal offense in which perpetrators are punished by law. I don't want to pay for it. Well, there you go. I guess that means prostitution is still legal in Swordland? Discussion on the current internal affairs. A storm was on the horizon outside my window and a storm of a different kind was brewing inside my office. I straightened myself on the sofa and looked at Yosef. He was sitting on the couch across from me, here to give me a report about the military operations. Mr. President, the BFF forces at Seoul Dam have been eliminated. We have discovered and destroyed three hidden bases of operation. The hunt for the militants continue. Hundreds of armed rebels have already been eliminated and thousands of firearms captured. With the authorization you gave us, the Swordish Armed Forces have assumed direct control of the Berger region for the purpose of eliminating the enemies of the state and bringing stability back to Swordland. Uh, great work. When will it be over? The situation is mostly under control, but there's still work to do. The army will clear the enemies as ordered and will not back down until the order is complete. This will take as long as it has to, Mr. President. It's not possible to give an exact time frame. Uh, keep me updated. Of course. He stood up and walked up to my desk. I'll be leaving the report here, Mr. President. You must leave now, sir. The general staff requested me. I'll keep you updated. He left the office before I could even reply. Okay. Rumberg plane. Uh oh. Lone Rumbergian warplane violated our airspace by entering the territory of Swordland for two minutes and left after issuing radio message. Which was what? Governor of Bergia killed by Bluetish rebels. Felix Braun, governor of Berger, was killed yesterday by the Bluetish Freedom Front militants who had occupied the Seoul Dam during a firefight with the police. All BFF militants were eliminated in the operation executed by Chief of Police Carl Greisner. Government officials reported that the dam has been cleared of militants and the area around S. Erzeren is secured. According to the statement from the Interior Ministry, the dam is undergoing some repairs due to the heavy firefight that broke out. The incident became the second major security incident to take place in Bergia in the last couple of weeks. Vice Governor of Bergia issued a statement to the res residents of Bergia urging them to exercise vigilance following the attack. People who reign in terror are trying to take back our land, our homes, our people away from us. We have lost a great man, our beloved governor, in this dreadful attack, yet we all know that his blood will not remain on sacred ground. Exercise discretion and stay away from all gatherings and be cautious when moving around in areas that are heavily populated by Blutish. 
By the order of President Rain, Swedish Armed Forces have been mobilized to combat the BFF terrorists in the Berger region. Justifiable decision after the invasion of Seoul Dam and the kidnapping of Felix Braun comes as no surprise. The Army reports that all enemy targets have been eliminated and Seoul Dam has been saved. Bugs Land blockades Helgeland. So they're blockading the island now. Tension. We've also got... Uh, Felix Braun was a Swordish politician. British pro protest quelled. Hey, we did good. Wow. Uh, we could... Fun political youth group. Let's try and make some money before we try and spend some money here. Uh, the assembly proposes an amendment to section six of the tax code. The FLTA seeks to improve the fairness of the taxation system and increase tax revenues. Section one sets a 15% tax rate which will be imposed on items of luxury goods class determined by the Ministry of Economy, jewelry, furs, cars, and whatnot. It's a luxury tax. Uh, most importantly, it gives us plus two on our government budget, which will bring us up to negative. There we go. Next. The GNA proposes the ATA to socially... Wow, look at our economy just dropped again damn up and down up and down uh da, 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 da. one more for the government budget and it dropped again so there's that uh possibility of funding a political youth group has arisen. This could serve us to extend our ideolo ideological reach and even boost our election efforts. The presidency would privately funnel a large amount of government funds to the youth wing in exchange for loyalty and support. This is kind of what I was wondering was going to happen. We can make uh, the young swords Kind of our little, uh, what was it called? Hitler Youth. Rain Youth. There we go. Yep, we'll do it and go back in the hole. Apparently my economy didn't like all the new taxes, but we raised it up, we dropped it down, now we got some lackeys. Young Swords promised to protect ballots. Hmm. With the election looming on the horizon, the Young Swords organization rallied its members to voting places across Swordland. The threat of Malianism and neighboring countries trying to intervene in our election, we need to unite against them. The Young Swords is an organization that has always been fighting for a strong Swordland. We will be able to maintain the values that our founder, Tarkin Soul, fought for all those years ago. Rain put a lid on alcohol consumption. So there's our tax for alcohol, tax for luxury items. Young Sword membership double. According to recent activities, there seems to be an increase in Young Sword members. Thus far, we estimate the amount of Young Sword members have doubled. After the interview with the group's spokesperson, he confirmed the news. He stated, We are receiving lots of donations from citizens across the country. This is a massive grassroots movement. It's actually not, it's me. Mm. All right, that's not bad. Uh, emergency call on an escalating situation, uh-oh. 
I was woken up in the middle of the night by a call from the Ministry of Defense. Due to the sensitivity of the information, I had to be urgently briefed. I'm just getting these steam achievements left and right here. Put on my clothes as fast as I could. Rushed downstairs and opened the door. Serge was waiting for me. I arrived and was directed downstairs at the Ministry of Defense. I came to a set of large doors and quickly read the sign above them. War room. <coughs> the dimly lit room was filled with cutting edge equipment. The latest video screens. Oh, it's the uh, situation room here. Centerpiece of the room was a large round table with a coat of arms of Swordland engraved on it. David, Lucian, Vulcan, and Yosef were already deep in discussion. Sir Lancia, I advise caution. Going to war wouldn't help anyone. We must maintain peace in Swordland and Eastern Mercopa at all costs. What do you expect us to do? Sit down and do nothing? They're testing us. I bet this has to do with that plane. We must respond immediately, otherwise I will think we are weak. What's going on here? President, thank you for coming at, at this late hour. There's a situation. Vulcan, please go ahead and provide your report. President, approximately 20 minutes ago, Rumberg downed one of our planes with anti-aircraft fire from the ground. Pilot was... Oh, no. It's an act of war. The last recorded position of the plane was inside Swordish airspace. So they're shooting down planes in our own airspace. General Kruger, I mean no offense, but are we absolutely sure that this is the case? Are you sure this has happened within our borders? No offense taken. Here are the locations on the map and the reports from the airbase. Pointed to several markers on the map. To answer your question, yes, we are absolutely sure. You can see here on the map that the plane was downed approximately 10 kilometers inside our border. We have calculated the trajectory of the gunfire, and they started firing when our plane was within our border. The plane was down near Halgen. How dare they? The attack against our sovereignty. Terrible. What should we do? Mr. President, I must insist. We need to be calm. We must maintain peace. I agree. They're trying to lure us into their trap. We have enough military power to contest against this violation of international law. We should attack and down one of their planes in retaliation. Otherwise, we will look weak and it will lead to more casualties. We can't look weak. If we appear weak, it will jump on the opportunity. We must order a military retaliation immediately. I agree with the general. President, our army is ready to do whatever it takes to protect Swordland. Gentlemen, before it comes to that point, we can prevent further bloodshed by using diplomacy. Room fell silent before Joseph finally spoke up. What are your orders? Oh, this is going to be a big decision here. This is going to be a big decision here. Start the Swordish War Machine and prepare to invade Rumberg. They will pay for their crimes. An eye for an eye. We will retaliate with equal force to display our strength. Swordland can't afford to look weak. Or we will do diplomacy, because nobody wants war. But we don't want to look weak. But we don't want to start a war. Going for this one. Eye for an eye, guys. Shoot him down. Very well. If there's to be a retaliation, we need to be extremely careful. They will seek every opportunity to blame us for it. We can't further escalate the situation and destabilize the region need to prevent a war at all costs. I'm saying this is a man who has lived through too many years of war. We are not the ones who escalated the situation. They were first. President, I assure you, they won't dare attack us for that. They know that we are far superior. But are we? This will send a strong message. I will send word for the start of military operations. Our target will be their war planes at an airbase near the border. I still think a peaceful solution would be more beneficial, but of course I don't have the military experience and insight Mr. Lancia has. I will begin my task immediately, Mr. President. If you'll excuse me now, I must talk to the military command to relay the orders. He saluted. I will bring the paperwork. Joseph returned with the paperwork for the order and showed me where to sign. Go. 
Now that the paperwork is done, I have an idea, Mr. President. I think we should hold a military par parade to display our strength. Like North Korea does. I'm with Mr. Lancey on this one. which should work well as a deterrent, and it will come in handy as a tool to de-escalate the situation. And it's everyone on the same page. Fantastic. Organize a military parade. I will keep you updated on the situation. So we are almost at war with Rumberg. Oh boy. Uh, what do we have? Marcel Caranti investigation. Uh, Swordish plane shot down. Our plane was shot down when it was flying near Halgen over the territory of Swordland by an anti-aircraft missile. Our pilot did not threaten Rumberg in any way, says Joseph Lancia. Despite the revealed evidence from Swordish officials, the Queen of Rumberg had the guts to claim that our plane was shot for violating their airspace. A truly heinous act purposely done by our rivals to the north. This tragic event will have severe consequences for swordish rumberg relations. Um, all right, well, I think uh, that's good for today. We're moving closer to war with Rumberg. Um, but we did get uh, the dam back, and unfortunately that governor there, Felix Braun, is now probably headless. But Swordland moves forward. Anyway, if you liked the episode, hit that like button. You want to follow along as we uh, head off towards war with Rumberg? Hit the subscribe. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you for the next episode. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a very good day.